What is autonomy in action in Abu Dhabi in 2025, briefly? I think, uh, unlike other cities or other countries that are talking about the concept of autonomy and mm. what it can do in the future, I think the combined ecosystem of the Autonomous Council led by Sheikh Hamdan really driving the fact of for autonomy to happen, you need regulation to move at the same speed, which many countries are facing an issue with. You need enabling the use cases, because it's new, to also happen at, at, at large scale. And you need to really encourage the right technologies to be built here or be brought here to be able to drive it. And I think when we say, what does it mean at, for the UAE and for Abu Dhabi uh, at this stage, just look at the amount of programs and pilots running this okay. year. And in my view, look at the landscape in 2026. This city and this country will be one of the largest deployer of autonomous platforms globally for a while, although it's a much smaller country, mm. you will see a heavy adoption of autonomy, and I think that sets the vision of how bold the country wants to be in the space. Area. So as I, as I understand it, the, the, the vision is for 25% autonomy, uh, auto autonomous mobility by 2040. Um, that, is, that is quite some, that, that is quite some uh, exercise. I think for some sectors, It'll we be will be way beyond that. It'll be way beyond that. All right, well, let's talk about these sectors. I mean, for example, um, you've said that you're committed to shaping the era of intelligent autonomy where machines think, adapt, and act alongside us. What does that mean on our roads, in our industrial sector here, and in the air? How does what is going on as far as autonomy and action is concerned, fitting into the wider vision for Abu Dhabi as an emirate going forward? I think a key point to, to, to clarify is what does autonomy really mean? Mm. Because it's one thing to say you want a, a vehicle, let's use a vehicle as an example, yeah. to go from point A to point B to point C, and really doesn't really understand context, doesn't understand anything, it's just going from point A, point B, point C. And that has been there for a while. It's not anything new. What's meant by autonomy, whether it's a car, whether it's a drone, whether it's a robot, is that machine understands context. The machine understands the environment and mm. decides based on the objective or the mission what it should do. That's really the big change in what's happening in autonomy. Mm. And what that means is when you're referring to logistics <coughs> or you're referring to people movement or robots, you are actually having the machine work very closely with man to really take off the burden and the load of a lot of things that you can really offload to the machine to do for basic mission planning, for basic programs. And I think that is really the change that you're seeing with the combination of AI mm. and these machines. I mean, there are been companies like people like Boston Robotics and others that were pioneering in this field. Mm. But when they were building their robots, AI wasn't what AI is today. Okay. The game changed by combining what machines can do today with AI. And I think that's what you will start and we will discuss it, seeing it in cargo delivery and people mm -hmm. delivery and drones and robots and across uh, the, the society at an accelerated pace. Abu Dhabi has moved from being a buyer of technology to a builder of sovereign capabilities. The creation of the ATRC, um, which you lead, TII, uh, crucial here, MBZ, UAI, G42, Edge, again, your file, now recognized as one of the most coordinated tech plays or ecosystems uh, in the world in the past decade. Now, again, you caveat by saying we're a small place, but it's the ecosystem that allows for academia, um, developing technology platforms, regulation, to be connected yes. effectively to ensure, for example, that as innovation moves quicker than regulation when it comes to technology, you are keenly aware of how you create governance models for autonomous systems. Can you just walk me through some of what will be concerns to the general public about the speed at which we are seeing some of these innovations. 
I think like any um, phases in, in humanity or in society, there was a phase of the Internet 1.0 and mm -hmm. the Internet 2.0. And at that time, we were a growing nation. We re really didn't capture the growth and the potential of these phases. The phase we are in now, where AI and robotics, and when I'm calling robotics, whether it's a car, whether it's a robot, mm -hmm. I mean, these are robotics at the end of the day, are getting fused together. This is the time for a country like UAE, and the leadership is ultra-determined that we are not a passenger in this phase, mm. that we are a leading player in this phase. And what does that mean? So today, when we look at what will it make it work, and it's not like there are no smart people in other parts of the world, but there aren't as much determined people with leadership that mm. is really setting the chart of where we need to go as much as I see here. And, and how does that reflect? Setting up something like the Autonomous Council in this regard is aggressively addressing regulation, insurance. Mm. Let me use a small example in each, each bucket. Uh, we brought one of the platforms here to drive autonomous cargo around the city. The same company, the technology player that we were playing with, has gone to other countries. And until it got regulated to even have a plate license to drive, I think they've been there for like nine months in other countries to do mm. so. I think here we're like in 45 days, we did aggressive testing in the field, and then gradual pilots, zone by zone, the companies were shocked. They were like, you're in 45 days, someone else is nine months, and still talking. So regulation that's allowing it. Insurance, there were no insurance for unmanned platform. And the insurance companies, at least in the UAE, didn't know what to do. Talking to IHC, uh, uh, IHC within, I think, a week, we sort out all the insurance over here. Now the cars are driving mm. with an insurance in the country. So you have a council that's really fixing the issues. Autonomous companies or robotics companies can you know, dream all the dreams they want without giving them a use case, without giving mm. them real pilots, not in a lab. It won't grow. Mm. The amount of programs announced by the council and by others is today cutting across from parcel delivery to food delivery mm. to deliveries for people like Adnoc to, to all sorts mm. of players. That is encouraging so many companies to come here and really set up base because they can deploy at, you know, at least real, real uh, use cases. Combined with that, when we say sovereignty, we are building, other than being the best of breed from outside, we, for example, using TII, are, we've built our own AI model. Mm -hmm. We are now building our own robotics AI model, our own autonomous platforms in that mm. regard so that we can deploy at scale in our country while being cognitive of security requirements and other requirements. And last but not least, we are not doing this as a city and as a country, and mm. leadership has made it very clear. We are not in the demoing business and just you know showing mm. a picture of one car moving <laughs> around. Starting 2026, we will be a frontier country when it comes to this race. Not someone that is following, someone that's leading the race, and others will mimic that race. And I think we are set up and geared with all the ecosystem to do that. Well, I mean, I was going to ask you as a sort of final question what your message to this audience is about the vision. You know, we're in 2025 now, where you see yourselves in 2035. And I, I mean, I will ask you, I'll land that one for you, but you've just described where you're going to be in 2026, which is, you know, quite, quite remarkable, really. I mean, I, I guess it, it, it's my responsibility to a degree uh, to just ensure that we've had a discussion about the public concern when it comes to machines taking decisions independently. Greater autonomy, meaning less human control, or certainly that is the perception out there. How do you address this public concern as you look yes. to score out this vision? I, for the I future? think it's, it's, a, it's a very valid concern and a valid question. I think the only way to address it is to say, this is today a new technology, whether it's the AI, whether it's robotics and the fusing mm. of, of that. And it's clearly defining what things do you really want the autonomy to do by itself, because these are basic decisions, basic things. What things you really want to have human in the loop on making such decisions mm. in, in, in this regard? There are some basic things, whether it's you want to call it home chores or whether you want to say a, a basic task in a hotel, mm. someone going to deliver your food to your room. 
there are no, there are no catastrophic decision making that's going to happen. The robot's going to pick the food, it's going to bring it to your room, maybe take your bill, that's fine. On other more critical things that can impact humans, definitely going to make human in the loop, definitely going to put that trigger in place. But I think it's us testing these things, and I use, I'll use a few anecdotes. In line with this conference, we have the A2RL Racing League that is now, I think, in its second, third season, showing how security is improving. Last year, human Formula One racer was 10 seconds ahead of the autonomous car. And two days ago in the trials, and Saturday will be the race, two days ago in the trials, the AI beat the human in the race. Wow. So looking at how we measure safety over there, looking how we measure safety when we're referring to even creating, frankly, an event like this, mm. like DriftX, is really trying to take center stage to hear the comments of security, mm. hear the comments of regulation, hear the needs that the clients have, the, the different authority, whether it's the economics department, whether it's the other departments, are heavily engaged to ensure they can hear the regulator, regulation needs, mm. but they can hear the client needs, and then they can hear the society needs. And I think that an approach, a balanced approach by saying, let's be bold, we're not, we're not going to jump off the cliff and then think, do we have a parachute or not? But we're not going to wait until we finish all the analysis, paralysis mm. kind of thing. We definitely need to move, but we're going to move at least with intelligence in, in, in the space. Well, we've got a, a, a new pod vodcast series at CNN called Intelligent Future. You are uh, part of that. This is a real sort of drill down uh, on that show about just what's going on as far as deployment and development um, of the uh, AI and autonomous sort of uh, uh, infrastructure and, and ecosystem here. It's been fascinating to chart that development over the past few years. I'll give you 30 seconds just to address the audience. Your message as we open uh, this uh, autonomous week here in Abu Dhabi to those gathered here today. I think uh, concluding message is the following. I think to the audience and to anyone outside, if you're serious about autonomy, whether in cars, whether in drones, whether in robots, do not waste your time in any other country. This is the city to be in. This is the place to be in. And I can tell you one thing, and I think you will hear a number of surprises over the next three, four months. There will be multiple announcements of large programs related to rollout of autonomy and robotics at serious scale in this regard in this country. So if there is a place to test your product, bring your product, be supported and incentivized to, to, to drive autonomy, I've been around in different countries with all respect to many things that are going around. This is the place now if you really want to make it because everyone sitting here is ultra engaged from the government to extremely make it happen. Mm. And decision making is not run through a very long cycle. Decision making is done by whoever is in charge and they will make the decisions required to enable this. Faisal, it's good to have you, Your Excellency. Thank you Thank very you. much indeed. Excellent start to the day. Good luck, everybody here. Thank you.